Hello everyone, I'm bringing you a video today which is another in the series looking at the Royal Navy's adaption of the battle dress uniform. The Royal Navy of course didn't refer to this as battle dress as mentioned previously in the video looking at the number 5A working dress. What we're looking at in this video is a post-war cadet working dress. Both the blouse here and the trousers, we're going to have a look at both. This is very similar to number 5A, the blue serge working dress, the wartime blue serge working dress which we looked at previously again intended for officers, in this case officer cadets and midshipmen, as we have here, the midshipmen's rank on the collar. So this is a post-war development of that design and it's very, very similar to it. It does have some detailed differences and we're going to talk about those in the video. The trousers differ most, the blouse it's just detailed differences really. So looking at the front of this first of all, one of the things which differentiates this from wartime uh, standard issue number 5A working dress is the design of the collar. We now have a notched collar, similar to the Army's post-war 1949 pattern battle dress. You have that uh, modification to the design there. You also have the same size of buttons used throughout on the front here. Obviously, the, the collar tabs use a smaller design of button there, a smaller size of button to denote the rank of a midshipman. But you have standard size of buttons used across both the pockets and the front closure here, as you can see. At the waist, there are two buttons to allow this to be adjusted in somewhat, but limited adjustment there with just the two buttons at the waistband. So from the front, plain pockets and all the rest of it, the three button closure down the front here, the single button or the, the button closure at the waistband as well, very similar to number 5A. But as I say, this is actually manufactured around the late 1960s, early 1970s. We'll start moving this around now and have a look at some of the external details of this. Moving this around to look at the right hand side, we can see the cuff here with a concealed button, very similar to the number 5A blue serge working dress as you can see there you can see the cuff lining we'll see more detail of that obviously when we turn it inside out if a small suit type button there it's not a battle dress type button in this instance nor are those used to adjust in the waist so we'll button this back up again and then we'll have a look at the back so we'll turn this around now and have a look at the details of the back Looking at the back of this, there isn't a huge amount to see here. You can see we do have a seam running down the rear, and you can see how this blouses over the waistband at the rear there. It's not quite as bulky. There's not quite as much cloth to blouse over here as there was with the number 5A working dress, which we looked at previously. And one of the features to mention here is the crease pressed in across the shoulders. Now, this is how this came to me with this crease pressed in here. This was certainly a common thing to do in the army post-war, was to press in a crease across from shoulder to shoulder here. Uh, so it's entirely possible this was actually a feature of this when it was worn by an officer cadet at some point in its uh, actual use. So just to note that there, that feature, uh, as I say, I don't know if that is original to this or whether it's been done by someone who had this in their collection prior to me, but there is that crease in across the shoulders there. We'll turn this inside out now and have a look at some of the internal details. We have the blouse turned inside out now, and as you can see, the top here, we do have a concealed button, which would allow this to be buttoned right up to the collar if required. Just a small suit type button there, as you can see. The pockets at the front here, the pocket flaps are reinforced with this cotton lining material. You can see the waistband is also lined. And then there's reinforcement around the shoulder seam here as well. And you can possibly see this line of stitching here. Hopefully the contrast is good enough to show that. The shoulders are slightly padded as well, as a feature to note there. Turning this round to look at the detail of the arm here, you can see the lining which we have at the cuff there, and the reinforcement with the cotton lining material there, and more detail of that reinforcement around the where, where the sleeve attaches onto the shoulder of the blouse there, as you can see, and the lining of the waistband running all the way around there. Moving this round to look at the rear of the blouse, you can see we have that seam running down the centre there. Up in the collar we do have a hanging tab here, and you can see at the waistband here we have two buttonholes on pieces of cotton sewn in here. This one is actually sewn down. This one has come loose or not been sewn down. But these actually allow this to be buttoned onto the trousers more in the style of the Army's battle dress. It's a feature that was missing from number 5A. It's been introduced to this design post-war, which means obviously the trousers and the blouse are actually connected then. They are buttoned together at the waistband. There's no label in this, unfortunately. There is a label in the trousers, and obviously we'll move on to have a look at that in just a minute. We'll have a look at the trousers now, and these differ more from those we looked at previously than the blouse does. If we look at the waist fastening here, we hold this up here, you can see we have an integral waist belt, or a waist belt running through a channel, It is also exposed at the rear as well. And the waist belt is also made of the same blue serge as the rest of the, the uh, uniform. 
And you can see here we have a hook here and then this buckle, which actually has a loop on the back, which that hooks into there. And then this can be adjusted in for the wearer's waist. So you've got this built-in belt here. You can see the back of it's lined with uh, black cotton there. Uh, so just an interesting feature of the this design, you have this captive waist belt at the waist here, as you can see. There's a fly opening at the front with a re reverse button at the top there, as you can see, and then a button fly with concealed buttons down the front there. You have side pockets, which aren't actually in the side seam. They're set just forward of the side seam there, as you can see. Otherwise, very plain, as you can see there. And if we turn these round here, you can see at the rear, the waist belt is exposed at the rear here again. You have two buttons there, which we talked about previously, looking at the inside of the blouse. These button onto the blouse, more in the style of the Army's battle dress than the number 5A. We looked at previously that didn't have these buttons, but they've been introduced to this uniform. And obviously this joins the blouse to the trousers, stops them riding up, as mentioned previously. And then you have the two rear pockets here, as you can see, button through pockets there with a slit and the button through to the outside here, and the bags inside, which we'll have a look at. We turn these inside out now. With these turned inside out, you can see we have the lining at the waistband here in white, the black lining to the fly there. You have the bags for the hip pockets, you can see here. Actually a stamp on the inside of this one, which you can see there. Broad arrow and then there were one, two, three, six. I believe that's an inspection stamp there. And as you can see, very plain otherwise on the insides, you can see the details of the construction, the side seams and so forth there. And if we turn these round, we have the continuation of the the lining of the waistband there. You do have these white brace buttons around the waistband, as you can see. The bags for the rear pockets there, you can see the button stitched in there for those. And then we have the label up in the waistband here, and we'll have a look at this in close up now. You can see here the label in the trousers, and this reads Trousers Blue Surge WD Cadets, and then you have the NATO stock number there. And then size one, and these are manufactured by James Smith and Company, Derby Limited. And then you have the contract number there, which would give a date for these of around the late 1960s, early 1970s. So hopefully you found it interesting looking at this, a post-war adaption of the Blue Surge working dress design for officers in the Royal Navy. We'll be having a look at some other examples of the Royal Navy's adaption of battle dress in future videos. A private purchase example to have a look at, and also a version which sort of shows the ratings number 3A uniform, which was introduced during the course of the Second World War as well for naval ratings serving as air crew. We'll have a look at that in a future video as well. But hopefully you found it interesting looking at this, as I say. If you have and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as I always say, a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It really is greatly appreciated, as I always say. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video. So, until next time, bye for now.